In the 90s, R&B was everything, and we mean everything. And in the spirit of nostalgia and Soul Train Awards, we examine its undeniable impact and influence. State of R&B 90s Back starts now. I think 90s R&B is so important because it's almost like a thread mm -hmm. to what we know now is legendary. Mm -hmm. If we look, look back on what made certain artists the way they were, it was actually happening. The mm -hmm. groundwork was going down in the 90s, mm -hmm. and we actually lived through history. I also think 90s R&B was important just because of the abundance of black superstars and right. black greatness. Right. Like you, mm. nowadays it just kind of feels like they make it appear <clears throat> as if there's only room for one black right. female superstar, one black male superstar, but you right. had Genuine, you had Cisco, you mm. had all these amazing artists. As a young black woman growing wow. up in the UK, I so desperately wanted to look on TV and see somebody who not only looked like me, right. but my aunties, my cousins, Ooh, right. and wow. represented yeah, yeah, yeah. me. And wow. what I love is that, as you said, there were so many different expressions of black femininity right. mm -hmm. that were accurate. Right. Yes. And not only that, but right. they That's were the celebrated. Word. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Not tolerated, absolutely. Right. but celebrated. We had the braids of Brandy, right. then we had the flowing locks of Aaliyah, yeah. then we had the dreads of Lauren Hill. Like, yeah. There were so yes. many different yeah. expressions Incredible. of black womanhood yes. and looking over and seeing that, I was so proud to be yeah. affiliated with it. I think one of the main things that really attracted me from Europe and being in London as me and Rachel Absolutely. experienced is the fact that you all were you all had different identities and you yeah. all did have, you know, you had the bad boys, Joe to see, but yeah. then you had the prim and proper Crying boys to live, right? right? Yeah. Like, but, they, but you would have both of them in your CDs, yeah. man. Right. I think my favorite R&B night, the 90s R&B artist would be, and only because at 12 years old I fell away, at 14 years old I fell away, at 15 years old I fell away, mm. at 18 I fell in love. Mm. And that was Brandy's album, Never Say No. Oh, wow. You can't choose my, fine. you can't like, choose like, my like, shit, like, Harmony. Like, God, you gonna bleep that out, okay? Like, you understand, God. like, from beginning to end, yeah. like, it was like, I feel like she's, she preached my whole if life. You <laughs> right now. I was like, how does she know me so well? How? <laughs> it's a crazy, I was like, how did y'all know us thing? so well? Look, I'm looking at it's this, for, I'm looking at it, it's your uh, fault. I was about to say, <laughs> I have no idea. Listen, it's she all y'all fault. All we did was have fun making music. What more do I say? I remember like having like cutouts of Brandy all around my room. Wow. Like yeah. my mom bought me the Never Say Never album and wow. me and my family took a vacation. I think we were going to New Jersey. And we were all in a Winnebago and I listened to that album from, from Florida wow. to Jersey oh. and from Jersey back to Florida. Wow. Like Brandy oh. was like the first artist to teach me how to do runs and riffs. Oh, wow. mm. I need I need like a secret oh, or two about I'm, how I'm never say never. I don't know if it's a was. secret, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> definitely a secret. Yeah. We all stood in what we did. Mm. Yeah. So what's crazy is we worked at Criteria Hit Factory in Miami, and we had about four rooms going. But as we were writing, we would write and then we would record. Rodney would be in another room doing production, and he was like, "All right, so after this, this one going to go into this," and he would just play whatever the progressions was, <coughs> and then we would do metal. It was just, it was like a factory. I had never heard another body of work where everything was like the attention to detail was consistent yeah. in the production, in the ad libs, in the yeah. runs, yeah. and yeah. the writing. A mathematically it was perfect album. You couldn't do. You couldn't say the song. Never say never. Yeah. It wow. was <laughs> mathematical. Yeah. See, I, think, I, think <laughs> I remember <laughs> memorizing the runs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me and my friends were like, they were just as important as the song. Definitely. And we made that's just the, uh, for me and Brandy when we when we did vocals. Yeah. We would make sure that everything you heard was a hook. When I went to um, Las Vegas and I heard that Tony was being honored, to be honest, it wasn't a surprise. Um, she is legendary. Mm -hmm. She is iconic. And not just her voice, her voice, it's a standout. But what I loved about that era that she came from and where she was emerging, along with other artists, but specifically Tony, 
was how she carried herself. Mm. And for me, I loved watching her videos because I could watch with my mum and my aunties and everyone wow. just fall in love with who <laughs> wow. she was and how yeah. she came across. So for me, what was great was as she was standing on the stage, wow. we were just drawn into her integrity as an artist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a woman, yeah. which was amazing. Wow. But then she opens her mouth and we're mm. like, uh-huh. But what was amazing was that there were so many different amazing hits that were different. So not just slow love songs. We, yeah. She hit us with and wasn't man enough for me and got mm. everyone up and man dancing. Another LaShawn smash. Yeah. Thank you, sir. 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 You didn't know that. Thank you. So I'm watching the Tony Braxton movie, right? As I'm watching it, there's two people, two guys in the booth recording. <laughs> Tony, mm -hmm. man, it wasn't man enough for me. And in my head, I'm like, that's LaShawn Daniels. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Robbie Jackson. Oh and my so God. it's so wow. weird because yeah. I'm like, wow. you guys are so a part of such iconic moments yes, that wow. even in movies, when they, when they make them, you guys are there. Like, make the movie without that's, having your own playing it. That's insane. Like, that's, it's that's, insane. That's, 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 that's the grace of God. Yo, that's, that's nuts. Right. We've been through the good, the bad, and the ugly, but we are all that we got. SWV to the end of time. Thank you all. SWV, they was the coolest. Like, they mm. was just so fly and so cool with, from the way that they, I mean, my nails right now. Like, mm. serious, no, seriously, it, it all, it all comes back around, wow. but like, we wear long nails, not as long as Coco did them, <laughs> but we wear long nails because they, that's they how they rocked them in the yeah. 90s. It lives on, do you know yeah, what I mean? It absolutely. inspires generations to generations, and when that's what it's good. all about. But when it's good, but when, when it's, it's quality. It only works when it's quality right. music. Mm -hmm.